Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. There's a user on Reddit, Mr. Nightmean, that has documented how the video buffer seems to work worse if you have ad block on versus when you have ad block off. So essentially, YouTube is making the experience worse for users of ad block. And also, over the past few months, certain things have loaded slower depending on what browser you're using. Hint, it was in Chrome. I'm not even going to go over this from a sense of saying that it's unethical or immoral because, frankly, I, I believe that companies have the right to try to make money. What I want to explain is why the latest thing that they've done uh, doesn't even make makes sense as a business owner, nor does it make sense as a, as a connoisseur of the internet, for lack of a better way to put it. So this comes from Mr. Nightmean on Reddit. And I'm going to put this in full screen so I can show you what it is that he's found. So he's decided to load up a YouTube video over here. He's going to load it up. And when you load a YouTube video for the first time, what you'll notice on the bottom, I don't know if you ever looked at this before, but what you notice is there's a red bar, and the red bar says how far into the video you are. There's a light gray bar. That's how much of the video your client or your computer has downloaded. And the dark gray bar is what your computer computer has not downloaded. So the way this works is very simple. If the red section, which is where you are in the video, is less than the light gray section, the video will play because that is the video that you have streamed and downloaded to your computer. The period between the red section, which is where you are in the video, and the dark gray section is called a buffer. That is the video you have not watched yet, but that has been downloaded to your computer. This way, if your internet connection is not completely perfect, you have a buffer. Think of it like an anti-skip buffer for your Sony Walkman circa 1993, so that when you go running, when you stop for a second, the CD player kind of fills up the buffer again, and then when you go back to running, it's going to skip like crazy, but you're not going to care as much because it has read that into a memory buffer so that it is available even if there is a skip. Now, you can see over here what happens when he decides to continue playing the video. As he continues playing the video, you'll see that the video keeps playing, but the buffer is stopped. And once it's 23 seconds, the video freezes because it's not buffering anymore. It's not grabbing anymore. The play button is still hit, but the video is frozen. Now what he's going to do is he's going to go up here and he's going to disable ad block in whatever language that is. He's going to click reload. And once he reloads the video, you'll see that he gets a very different result. The video is playing and the buffer, which is that little gray bar over there, is keeping up much better and keeping way ahead of the red bar, which is where you are in the video. So he's able to make it to that point in the video and the video doesn't freeze and it keeps playing. Now, when he uh, turns Adblock back on and he reloads the video, you'll see the same thing happen again where the buffer stops at this point and it never goes past this point. And if he decides to keep playing the video, it will eventually freeze at that same point be the before because there is no buffer. YouTube is artificially stopping his web browser from grabbing enough of the video that there is enough to continue playing the video so it freezes. It seems like what they're doing is they are intentionally making the experience suck if you use Adblock. Now, now again, I am not going to say that YouTube is not allowed to make money. I run a business and I like to make money for my business. But what I do to try to make money for my business, I try to ask for money by providing value, not by annoying you. And above all, I don't have this system where like, I will give you a repair for free in exchange for annoying you and then try to like stop annoying you to try to get you to pay for the, like, I just don't do that. I don't do this. I'm, I'm mining your data shit, but I want, but may, maybe, maybe not. I'll do that if you pay me, but you won't see ads. So who cares about the money? Like my business is simple. Here's how to do it yourself. It's all available for free. If you want me to do it, I want this amount of money. What do you think? I don't annoy my users to try and get them to give me money. I don't go out of my way to, to piss them off. And here's why I think this is stupid. Put all the morals aside. Put the ethics aside. Put money aside. As a connoisseur of the internet for over 25 years, when I go to a website and the loading speed of the website is slow, it never in a million years occurs to me that that's being done on purpose because I have not yet paid them or because an extension is on my web browser that they don't like. It, how many of you have ever gone to a news website because you're linked to it, you're cross-linked to it in some Facebook post or some news feed and there's some video uh, of, the, of the article and you go to click play because, you know, I don't know, it's, maybe it's somebody freaking out at a gas station or maybe it's something where you really you don't want to read the article you want to see what went on and you hit play and it just takes like 10 seconds before the thing starts playing and then after 10 seconds it only plays one second of the video and then freezes what do you do at that point what i do is i quit the website and i immediately go elsewhere this is me going to nbcnewyork.com this is me checking out the website this is me hitting play i hit play where's my video i hit play again waiting 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 i'm not going to wait anymore I click off of this website. They're not even doing this on purpose. They're a legacy broadcaster. They can't help themselves. They don't know how the internet works yet. So their website's going to suck when it comes to video. When I hit play on a video and it does that, I don't think to myself, maybe if I gave NBC $13 a month, it would work. 
I hit control W and I get my news from elsewhere. It's not something that enters the minds of rational, normal people that maybe the reason that their connection to this website sucks is because they have not paid the money. And it takes a special type of dumbass business owner to think that that's the conclusion that somebody's going to come to, especially when you don't even put a warning on the video. So a lot of people, even people that are technically savvy, are not going to come to the conclusion that I need to give YouTube money. They're going to come to the conclusion that YouTube must be broken right now. Maybe I'll come back later. I'll do something else. I'll watch something else. I'll use something else. I'll go outside. I'll touch grass, which by the way, every one of us should probably be doing a little bit more often. This is not going to result in more people giving YouTube money. And, you know, this is one thing that I hear all the time that drives me nuts. It's when people say, remember the good old days of YouTube back before Google bought them? That was when YouTube was good. And no, it wasn't. Like, I remember trying to use YouTube in 2004 and 2005. It sucked. It was horrible. I would go out of my way to try to avoid visiting this website whenever possible and try to get context for the YouTube link that was posted on a forum anywhere else because anytime I clicked on a YouTube video, it would buffer way worse than this. What you saw while he had adblock on, he at least got 17 seconds of that video, which is 16 seconds more than I got from any fucking YouTube video I tried to watch in 2004 and 2005. As a result of the website never working, I just didn't visit it. I didn't even bother trying to visit this website to view anything again until around 2012 when I started watching content on YouTube more regularly and I realized the website actually worked. Because the website didn't load, I didn't go back to the website for another six or seven years. It never in a million years occurred to me that to check, you know, like, because I'm blocking third-party cookies, that's why my video is buffering. Or maybe YouTube wants money and if I gave them money, it would be faster. This is not the way most people that use the internet think. If a website is buffering and it's buffering repeatedly, they usually assume that something is broken with that website or that they need to go curse out their eyes. What 99% of the internet does is they try to get their information or their media from another source. Maybe if it's a guide from Ricky Began on how to get the bus switches to work in a knee VRP without sticking toothpicks in it, maybe just maybe I'll, I'll wait it out and I'll deal with the buffering a little bit. But for the most part, we just go to another site. One of the best things that Google could be doing for society by implementing this functionality is actually getting people to stop using YouTube and find other things to do with their time, find other stuff to listen to, find other stuff to watch, find other things to do. I guarantee you, 99% of the people that experience buffering as a result of YouTube purposely making it buffer for people who use Adblock will not result in them going, oh, maybe if I pay them, it'll be faster. It's going to result in them clicking X and leaving the way every single one of us, including the idiot that programmed this shit does when they go to a website that's loading slow. Tell me I'm wrong. I dare you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And again, if somebody wants to charge money for their services, by all means, I charge money for my services. Everybody that I know that makes money, that has a job, charges money for their services. We try to bill people for what we do rather than annoy the shit out of people until they pay us. Again, like one of them I think is a better business model than the other, but what do I know? I'm, I'm a small business owner and they're worth two or three trillion dollars, so. We live in a meme world, as I mentioned in the last video. What's going to follow is an ad, so I will give you time to reach into your pocket and hit X in your player so that you don't hear the ad. Okay, so a few years ago when I stopped doing border pair videos as regularly, I came up with a new website and a new way that I was going to try to continue with repair education since I just got bored after doing a thousand repair videos. For those of you who don't watch my stuff regularly, we do have over a thousand repair videos showing you how to do component level border pair um, with all different types of problems that most of the repair shops 10 years ago would tell you were not fixable. We try to kind of normalize the idea that it is fixable and get people more involved and excited about fixing things. And I, I just kind of got bored of doing the same video in the same format over and over again, let's be honest with you. So I decided to try and do a brain dump and take all of the troubleshooting information in my brain and put it over here so that you had it. I also thought it would be an easier format than telling people who wanted to figure out how to fix an issue, you have to go through a thousand online videos. So enter repair.wiki. Repair.wiki is a website that was kind of hastily put together by me. You can tell I don't have much of a sense of aesthetic taste or formatting, where I would put problems on the left and then solutions on the right. And I tried to make it really, really detailed so you could really get an idea of what it is you should be looking for so that even if you're kind of a newer technician, you wouldn't be completely lost. Now, the problem that we have with this wiki was twofold. A, 
that the format of it was kind of shitty, so it intimidated people from posting new articles, and B, that it was absolutely getting destroyed by spam. So we needed to switch over to a new format, which looked something like this that you see over here. However, the problem is all the guides need to be transferred over to this new format. Now, my original intention was to keep this old wiki up, which you can see over here, that has the very detailed version of the guides. This is the iPhone 7 guide in the old wiki. It's about 10 pages long. It's insanely detailed. And I was going to slowly transfer all the guides over to this new format format, then make the new format live. Uh, the problem that we have is that the old wiki got destroyed by spam. I take 100% accountability and responsibility for this. I just, I'll be honest, I was asleep at the wheel. I was burned out. After moving in 2020, dealing with a shitty contractor, COVID, riots, 2021, audit, 2022, Audit number two, 2023, a bunch of liens that were never supposed to be applied to my business that were the reason I couldn't get financing for the last seven years. I think about the last four years and I'm surprised I haven't had a nervous breakdown. In fact, that may be right on schedule. But in the meantime, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask for your help in fixing the mistake that I made in being a poor steward of this website and causing so many articles that were contributed not just by me, but by many other people to be locked in this read-only wiki on this database that has been completely destroyed. Help me copy these to a new one. And I can promise you that the new database and the new wiki that we're copying it to is never going to be allowed to get to this point again. The nonprofit has contracted with a regular developer that gets regular pay in order to make sure that this never, ever happens again. And he's a great developer, but he's not a repair tech. He's not somebody that's going to be going in there and understanding what the important elements of these guides are and transferring everything over. That's where I could use your help. And I would be honored and humbled to receive your help in transferring these guides over from the old wiki to the new wiki so that many people have a resource they can use for fixing electronics that the manufacturer says are unfixable. So there's a page over here, repair.wiki slash w slash migrate. That's repair.wiki slash w slash migrate that goes over how it is you can transfer guides from the old wiki to the new wiki. And what I'm looking for are volunteers that are open to taking a lot of this data that's been posted to the old wiki and post it to the new wiki in the new format. I, like... I'll be 100% honest with you. It's a little bit depressing. Like I tried to put something out there into the world for free that people could use for free to try and learn how to do these types of complex repairs and data recovery. And it literally just gets destroyed by spam. And like, while I admit that I should have been more awake, I should have been paying more attention to my own wiki. I should have had a developer on there that was paying attention to all this shit and watching as the database got destroyed. That's my fault for not doing it. It is just a little bit depressing that you try to do something nice and it gets destroyed. Thank you so much for taking the time. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.